Good day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph, and so this morning I decided to come and sit a little bit here in my garden uh, and uh, just uh, pray with you today. So today we're going to pray through uh, the dung gate. Uh, let me just get here to my notes. All right. Uh, so there's three kind of parts of uh, this session that I want us to do. The first part is we're going to humble ourselves before the Lord. The second part is we're going to repent before Him. And then, of course, the third one is to connect uh, to God as the source of our supply. Now, everything in a, in a dung gate has to do with getting the flesh, uh, getting the sin, iniquity, and things like that out of our lives, and then connecting with God. What actually what happens with people uh, that are uh, continually sinning in an area of you struggle with the sin in your life then there's something in your life that became a source for you that is not God and the more you draw on that source or you look at it or you desire it the more that get, uh, gets uh, duplicated in your life now there's actually a Hebrew word uh, for iniquity and let me just find it here um, so here it is okay um, the Hebrew word for iniquity is the Hebrew word avon. Okay, uh, so uh, the avon is the the iron, the vav, and the nun, uh, and and it's a picture of an eye, a hook, and a fish. Okay, so that's the avon, uh, the eye, the hook, and a fish, uh, and the meaning of it is, whatever your eye hooks into will multiply in your life. So the the fish, you know, supply. Uh, something that multiplies and so avon means your eye look at something your eye hooks into it and then that gets multiplied in your life so it means if you would always uh, you know maybe you are looking at uh, growing a garden you got all kinds of pictures everywhere around you about growing gardens i can guarantee you afterwards you will start to grow a garden or if you the whole time look at um, you know different cars and you got pictures of cars everywhere, then every time you go past a car lot, you're going to be interested to look at it, and you're going to probably want to buy one of those cars for yourself, just because that gets multiplied in your life. Now, let's say there's something sinful that you look at, then you look, you see it, your eyes get hooked into it, you start to desire it, and then that, that gets uh, uh, multiplied in your life. Now, th the idea of Avon works both uh, um, in, a, in a good sense and in a negative sense. And in, uh, I think, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says there, uh, when we come into uh, the throne room of God and we behold His glory, then uh, we are changed from glory to glory. That means you hook your eye into the glory of God and then that what you see gets multiplied back into your life. Okay. And so what we want to do, we want to unhook our eyes from things that are a source of supply uh, that's uh, from the enemy or is full of darkness or is not connected with our blueprint. And then we want to connect our eye into God and into the plans and the purpose that He has written for us in our blueprint so that we can multiply that in our lives. Okay, so let's quickly just run through the scriptures and then we're going to get in and pray. And my desire is for the glory of God to be in this uh, dung gate on the southern side uh, of your life. Okay, so um, the, the first scripture here is James chapter 14. It says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Okay, so the lifting up can never be done by you. The lifting up has to be done by Him. So what we do, we humble ourselves before Him and as we humble ourselves, He lifts us up. So that's a working together. And again, that has to do with unhooking ourselves from uh, the things in our lives uh, that are sinful and hooking ourselves to God and he will then bring that uh, that abundance that prosperity uh, the fulfillment uh, the fulfilling our blueprints and our destiny he will bring all of that that's the lifting up okay uh, there's another scripture here uh, and that's probably well known 1 John chapter 1 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that's probably a key verse for the done great and so confessing your sins is really to say you know what this thing that I've done this is wrong I declare it is a sin it is sinful I'm guilty I've done it all right and in the moment you confess your sin before God and you know the next step of the repentance is uh, uh, confession is of course repentance we say I turn away from it when we confess our sin then he's gonna wash us clean with the blood of Jesus all right so step one we humble ourselves step two we confess our sins that we have before the Lord 
uh, and then uh, step three, and this is now from Matthew chapter uh, 417, and this is the words of Jesus. Jesus said, uh, fro from that time Jesus began to preach and he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so the repentance means to turn, to unhook from desiring something, to turning towards him, to turning towards the kingdom. And, and hooking into the kingdom as the source of our supply. So repentance is really to change the source of your supply. Um, so the, the word, I think, is uh, um, the, the Greek word literally means to change the way you think to the point that you change the way you behave. Okay, uh, But uh, from a spiritual point of view, as you change the source of your supply, you turn from darkness to light. Uh, and uh, the kingdom of God is what you draw out of. Uh, Ian Clayton always says the kingdom of God is as close to you as the air that you breathe. And you can turn into it. And whatever you turn into, you're going to draw from that supply. So you turn towards the kingdom of God and start to draw from the kingdom of God. Okay, so let's go uh, through those processes. So Father, uh, we come before you. Lord, we humble ourselves. And so Lord, our desire is for this uh, dung gate uh, in the south of our lives, of our spirit man, to be cleansed, to be filled with the glory of God, to be full of the, the, the breath of God, to be filled with the fire of God. And so, Father, we, we humble ourselves. Lord, we lay our lives down. We say, not our will, but your will. Uh, Lord, we, we say, Lord, uh, we lay down all our plans, all our dreams, all our ambitions and our strategies. Lord, we lay it down before you. Lord, we lay our lives uh, before you, Lord. And we say, not what we want, Lord, but your kingdom first. Lord, we seek you. We desire you with everything that's in us. And so, Lord, we bow ourselves. We declare that Jesus is our Lord. Uh, uh, Father, you are our God. You are our maker. You are our creator. You are the source of our identity. You are our Father. Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. And Lord, we yield ourselves to you this morning. And so, even as we humble ourselves before you, Lord, we want to come and repent. Lord, we repent from the sins in our lives. Lord, uh, by bowing down to idols, you know, speaking vain words, not honoring our parents, stealing, killing, uh, adultery, jealousy, covetousness, uh, giving false witness. Lord, all of those things, Lord, we repent of it. Lord, not uh, obeying you, not walking and rest, but driving and striving. And so, Jesus, thank you. Even as we repent, Lord, we unhook ourselves from every area in our lives what we desire that's not your kingdom, Lord, and we connect to your kingdom, Lord. We draw from the supply in your kingdom, Lord. We hook ourselves into you, into your glory, Lord. We love you. We love your kingdom. We love your people. And Lord, we desire to see your kingdom be established on this earth. And Lord, we draw from that supply right now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, thank you that we can repent. Yeah, Lord, thank you that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's as close as the air that we breathe. And so, Lord, we draw on the supply that comes out of the kingdom that's in heaven. And so, Father, we come and we bring that dung gate now before you. Lord, we ask for your fire. We ask for your for your Holy Spirit breath, for your river to flow through this. Lord, thank you that every part of our body, uh, of our soul and of our spirit, man, is washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask for a flow from the glory of God on the inside to flow through this dung gate. Lord, all honor, all praise belong to you. Holy Spirit, thank you that you come like a dove and you rest upon us. So even as, as I... Uh, as I pray, I just see how the Holy Spirit is coming down like a dove and He's sitting upon you. I see how the oil of God is being poured out uh, uh, over you, how the blood of Jesus cleanses you and how you stand there and how the Lord is cleaning our southern gates. Uh, Lord, we are your servants. Lord, uh, we're going to push with you. We are yoked with you. And so, Lord, we want to see your kingdom be established. All honor and glory belong to you. In the name of Jesus. I mean, I want to encourage you. Uh, just keep on praying a little bit in tongues. Allow the, the Holy Spirit uh, just to, to blow through this gate. Until this gate is completely open and is functioning and flowing in your life. The Lord loves you very, very much. And, and He desires for each one of the 12 gates of our spirit man, just like the gates of Jerusalem, to be whole and to be functional so that the glory of God that's on the center of us can flow to the, out, to the outside. We are praying through 
the 12 gates of the city of Jerusalem. And so now we are at gate number five, and this is the Dung Gate. <laughs> and so the Dung Gate is very, uh, this is the, the, in the southern part of Jerusalem, uh, and this is the place uh, where repentance happens. Uh, this is where all uh, the stuff that's in our life that's not supposed to be there gets uh, dealt with in our lives. Uh, this is the place where we get cleaned. So if you can think about a, a, a bathroom where you go and you wash yourself, you get all that sweat off of you. Uh, if you think about a lavatory, Theory, uh, where you go there and you just rid yourself of all the access uh, and you get yourself cleaned and washed clean uh, before the Lord. And that is the, the dung gate. Now, the way that I found um, th to, to activate that, that southern gate to work uh, properly is first of all to go through repentance and deal with all the sins in your life and then to lay your life before the Lord to become a servant. Now the picture uh, of the southern gate is the ox and the function of the ox is to push and to plow and to bolt and to even uh, to work, to serve. And so even as Jesus said to us, I want you to be yoked with me, he was talking about the ox and the function of that ox is to function of Jesus to serve him, to walk with him, to push with him, to intercede with him so that there can be a breaking of the ground so that the seed can be planted and a harvest can come forth. And so if you think about you being a servant in the house of God, it means you're going to prophesy, you're going to, you're going to pray for people, you're going to do intercession, you're going to this enthrone principalities uh, from their places, uh, we're going to take seats in heavenly places, uh, we're going to come into the river of the Father. Remember, uh, the Father is the servant, the Father is the ox, the Father is the one uh, that gives us identity of who we are. And so when we miss our identity, then what happens? Then sin comes into our lives, so we got a wrong idea of life uh, and then uh, we we struggle and so that's why all that dung needs to come out of our lives so that we can be cleansed and we can start to serve and we can become an ox in the kingdom of God so I want to I want to pray through this process and so uh, we're going to step into the courts of heaven before the Lord now uh, before I just uh, um, go through the, the prayer I just want to read to you quickly some of the the elements that we will find in the southern gate so the first of all is repentance and sanctification so it's not just repentance but there's also sanctification it means jesus comes he washes you clean by the blood of jesus spiritual purification all right so we're gonna walk before the lord holy and pure uh, both in our spirit in our soul and in our body every image in our mind that's in um opposition to what God is speaking to us, we need to get it out of our lives in uh, this uh, southern gate. Uh, then you're talking about repentance and confessing of sin. That's what we do uh, in the courts of heaven. And of course, humility <laughs> to be a humble servant. Uh, and then um, the, the lop side of it is now to serve, to intercede, to pray, to preach, to prophesy, to pray for people, uh, to, to help people. Maybe people are struggling to feed the poor, uh, to, to go to the, the down and outs, to, to the widows, to help them, to support them, uh, and also to bring protection in people's lives, to stand on God, to stand in uh, the gate, uh, to be that one to say, you know what, uh, I'm going to take the, the hours from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock uh, in the morning and I'll pray and I'll stand in the gap. Okay, So that's all part of the dung gate if you think about uh, queen esther in the bible uh, you know she went in and there's a chance she could have died but she said no i'm going to go in she was standing in the southern gate she said i'm going to serve and even if it costs me my life it doesn't matter i'm going to stand there you're thinking about uh, samson the power of god came onto him in his latter days and he pushed the pillars of that building over and it fell on him and he died because he laid his life down to serve to save the people of israel and so we're coming today, Father, uh, into this southern gate, into the down gate. And Lord, even as we come into this gate, Lord, uh, we bring that whole gate that's in our spirit, man. We bring it into the court of heaven. And so, Father, we look when we look at this gate, Lord, in the courts of heaven, Lord, we can see uh, these uh, demons that are there. Uh, Lord, uh, there is um, uh, unrepented sins, accusations. Uh, there is documents that the devil is bringing against us about sins that's in our bloodlines oaths 
um, uh, you know, different sins and covenants uh, that our forefathers has made, uh, that we have made. And so, Lord, we come before you in humility and we humble ourselves and, Lord, we repent. We say, Lord, we confess every sin, Lord, uh, that we have not honored our father and our mother. Lord, that we have not worshipped you alone. Lord, that we, we've used your name in vain. Lord, that we haven't stepped into the rest of God. Lord, that we've stolen, we have um, committed adultery. Uh, Lord, we uh, uh, coveted other people's stuff. Uh, we've given false witness uh, and we've lied. Uh, and so, Lord, we've murdered other ones, uh, even uh, physically or through our words. And so, Lord, we are guilty. And so, Lord, even as we stand before you, Lord, we repent of our sins, Lord. Uh, we haven't listened to the Holy Spirit. We were not obedient to you. We haven't given, but we tried to hold unto everything for ourselves. We wanted to do things our own way instead of your way. So, Lord, we repent. We humble ourselves. And so, Lord, even as we confess, Lord, that we are guilty, Jesus, thank you that you come right now and in the courts of heaven and you take out uh, uh, those filthy garments off of us. Lord, you put a rich robe, uh, a robe of, of righteousness on us. Lord, you take off uh, that uh, old uh, a crown of thorns, uh, Lord, and you put on uh, the, the crown uh, of uh, uh, righteousness on us lord you restore our position as a son in the house of god and so lord thank you uh, that we can stand here in the southern gate and lord you can wash us clean and so i can see how the lord jesus comes and he just wash you with his word with his water he comes with his blood and he washes you with his blood every sin of every document is wiped away and so lord we can stand before you holy and lord you speak a decree over our lives to say you are made holy because my son is holy and he has paid the price for you and so father thank you that we can come to you and we even bring our soul before you and lord every image in our mind maybe lord we saw an image from a movie or from a, a picture from google uh, images lord we saw something uh, something that we experienced in real life lord that we should not have in our mind and so, Lord, we ask now, Lord, that those images be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Lord, I think about maybe a picture that I saw of a woman that I should not have seen. And so, Lord, I repent of that. Wash that clean by the blood of Jesus. Lord, maybe I saw a picture of something that, that I covet or I desire or I'm jealous. Lord, maybe a car, a house, a place where someone lives, uh, a friendship that someone has, an amount of money that someone has. Lord, anything any desire, any image in my mind, Lord, that is not, uh, it's contrary to you uh, and it's not worshiping you, it's not bringing honoring to you, it's not in the line with the DNA and the blood of Jesus, Lord. I bring it before you, Lord. Thank you that you come and you wash it clean by the blood of Jesus. And so, Lord, even as we stand before you, holy, Lord, you bring your mandates and your scrolls to us, Lord. And, Lord, we receive a scroll of being a servant. And so, Father, thank you for that ox. Jesus, you said, come to me, I'll give you a rest and yoke yourself. And so, Father, Jesus, Jesus, we come to you and we yoke ourselves with you right now. Jesus, you are our Lord and we submit underneath your Lordship. We're going to walk with you. We're going to be obedient with you. We're going to trust you. And Lord, even thank you for an intercession anointing that you released. And so even as you sit there, receive that anointing to intercede, to be a servant, to pray, uh, to intercede, to stand in the gap, uh, to keep faith when no one else keeps their faith, uh, to keep on praying. And Lord, we receive uh, the anointing to keep on prophesying, to speak the word of the Lord over your people. Lord, we receive an anointing to pray for the sick. We receive an anointing to give to the poor, to help the innocent, to help the one that cannot think for themselves, to bring the justice of God into this earth. And so, Lord, thank you for the ox that is being released and so lord there is in us the lion and there's the ox and there's the eagle and so father thank you for the ox that's being released right now even as we stand and you cleanse us this south gate in our lives in the name of jesus and i just want to tell you the lord is releasing on you a prophetic anointing to prophesy and you can receive it right now. Lord, thank you that we receive that mantle. The Lord is giving you an intercession anointing. He's giving you an anointing to go into the courts of heaven, into the realm of heaven, into intercede uh, for uh, the people that God has given you authority over in your life. The Lord is giving you authority 
to, to bring down principalities and to seat, sit uh, uh, on the gates, uh, to sit uh, in that seat of authority that the Lord is calling you to walk in. And so, Lord, to receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the responsibility uh, to be yoked with you, Jesus, with your Lordship. And so, Lord, we are a Lord. Uh, uh, surrendered to you as our Lord. And so, Lord, thank you for that stewardship anointing that you even release us on our life, Lord, as you cleanse the southern gate in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to encourage you, even as your southern gate opens up, I want you to see how the fire of God is going through you and how there's just a new uh, passion inside of you to minister, to give, uh, to serve, uh, to preach, uh, to, to prophesy, uh, to heal the sick, and to see that fire of God and that servant uh, 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 anointing uh, that was on the life of Jesus to come on your life so that you can serve your community and bring the life that's in heaven to this earth. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for an open south gates. Ooh, thank you. Ooh. Yeah, I can feel the anointing on that south gate. Oh, it's, it's awesome to have the gate open. Thank you, Lord. I say, God bless you. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm going through um, 12 gates. This was gate number five. Uh, see you in the next gate. God bless you. God loves you. Uh, please write a comment and please uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, still sit here and I'm going to get busy and I'm going to pray through each one of those gates. And hopefully uh, I can uh, have some videos that I can post to help you uh, to cleanse each one of those Jerusalem gates in your life. And so once we're done with the Jerusalem gates, then we're going to go to the gates of your spirit. I'll do separate prayers for each one of those again, and then for your soul, and then your body. And so we're just going to make sure that all the gates are properly open so the river and the power, uh, the, the love of God can flow through you. Remember, the kingdom of God is not only just words, but it is the demonstration of power. God loves you. Have a fabulous day.